Hi everybody, how are you going? Um, congratulations for getting to this point and I was just commenting to a few of the guys from Kokoda that I'm so nervous, it's only four and a half weeks to go so you're probably feeling pretty similar to me, I'm having another go this year so this will be my third year but I've actually evented um, first aid and done medical for, for the Kokoda Challenge, this will be my tenth year being involved so I've pretty much put a bit of a snapshot together of the, the time that I've been involved with the Kokoda just to give you a hand and some of the things that we've come across in the time that I've been involved. So I'm, I'm, I suppose bottom line is I'm going to scare the pants off most of you, all right? So um, if you're not worried about this already, then I'm uh, definitely going to make you a little bit more worried, okay? So a little bit about what we do, guys. First Aid Acts Emergency. We're a local first aid training organisation on the coast. Um, we, I, I went to Miami High, so it is a local, this is my local ground. And I get people approach me all the time for you know, supporting this, that and the other. And the first year I was involved with Kokoda, and if you heard me heard me talk before, I'm gonna apologise up front, but the first year I was involved with Kokoda, I got into Narang Forest and I was first aiding there and um, at the last checkpoint at the Oval. And there's about 20 something Ks to go at that point in time. And it was about three in the morning. I had one of the Kokoda kids fall over and, and break his arm. And um, it was the first year I was involved and I went out there and I sort of grabbed him and started strapping his arm up and to get him out. He said, no, 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 the diggers would have kept going, I'm gonna keep going. And this kid was 17 years of age and I just thought, oh mate, these guys are on a winner, whatever they're doing. So from that then it just got me hooked in. I just thought it's just great what they do. So, um, you know, we, we, spoke, we sponsor things like Park Run Australia. Um, we do a lot of local events, Kokoda, all the trail series and all those sorts of things and help out where we can. We look after a lot of, a lot of local clubs and things like that. And primarily our, our main income is from training schools. So if you're involved in a school, come and give us a yell, check us out. People have a ball training with us as well, all right? So, um, we've got some specials on for schools and things like that, but it's in your pack. So, primarily, I'm just going to give you a few tips on, on my snapshot, like a mini TAFE course on how to look after yourself with first aid, so I don't have to come out and check you out, or our first aiders aren't, you know, slaving away with your wobbly bits and pieces over the challenge event. So, what to do in emergency, obviously, the, just the key aspects of what to do. Um, a third of people will not make it to the finish line of this Kokoda Challenge, either from halfway or the full way, due to feet and knees alone. So I'm really going to focus a lot of my um, helping you out in that area, so feet and knees. Um, obviously sprains, sprains, a bit of chafing as well, and we're going to talk about skin slick and just what you need to have on the track and cutting all the jargon and junk out of it as well guys, just keeping it really simple for you, okay? I'm going to pull one of the Kokoda kids up as well later, Blake, he's going to give me a hand, I'm going to show you how to strap a knee for ITV syndrome, so he's going to come up in, in a little bit and I'll give him a yell, he's going to try and get out of it, but we're going to get him up here. Guys, primarily, oh, there's a lot of trail events, um, UTMB, there's lots of trail events throughout the, uh, on the planet now, and it's become very popular since we started doing it back, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but essentially there's a lot more education out there around this, but this is one of the only events where you will do it with a team of three other people or a school team, um, and I think it's quite unique because a, a lot of us trail athletes are very much solo people where not having good conversations with people, we like to be pretty solo, but this is really just that team getting to the finish line. And, and I think from here, the job's pretty much been done. Really, if you haven't done any training, then no biggie, don't go out and smash yourself in the next four and a half weeks because you won't get to the start line. But pretty much it is what it is now, and face it, deal with it, improvise, adapt, overcome, get to the finish line no matter what happens. So your number one goal is getting to the, to the finish line with your team of four, no matter what happens. And that, that's really what you should be starting to think about. So never leave a team, mem team member behind on the track. You need to start thinking about that. Um, people are gonna pull out of this event. They do every year. About a third of all people will pull out of this event. Please don't make it you. Think that you're gonna get to the finish line. But essentially, if one person pulls out, there's only three people left in your team. Um, if another person pulls out of that, of that that particular team, you cannot continue with two. You must join another team. And simply for the fact if, if another person goes down and gets injured out there somewhere, then there'll be one person on their own. And, and I've been searching through the track for a school teacher last year, actually, that was having a heart condition that decided to stay out there on her own in a really remote area of the track. And it took me nearly three and a half hours to find her. So running through the bush um, trying to find this, this teacher who should have known of all things that she shouldn't have let everyone leave her and go away from her and 
try and find help. So always leave one person with an injured person, no matter what. Go back or forward up the track, whatever the closest checkpoint is. Um, Queensland Ambulance will actually be in support of this event as well, and we will have um, a few ambulances, including a four-wheel drive ambulance and possibly even a motorbike on track as well to help out. But essentially, because Queensland Ambulance have been notified of this event, if you call 112 or triple zero, you let them know that you're in part of the Kokoda Challenge, and we already have ambulances on track that can get quick access to you. Okay, so just recognising that, making the call early. Um, knowing where you are is very important as well, what, between what checkpoints, so please obviously like it's hard to think when you've been out there for 20 hours, um, let alone do anything else, so just keep in mind where you are and let, letting them know where you are and make it easy for them as well, okay? Upper limb injuries, as I've said, like broken arms, you know, collarbones, falling over, doing wrists, you know, you, you can walk with that stuff and a 17 year old kid can prove that. Like, I'm not saying walk with a broken arm, but you can get to the next checkpoint to get yourself sorted out. If someone, we've, we've had broken legs, we've had twisted ankles, we've had hips come out, we've had dislocated knees, you name it, we've pretty much had everything. Um, please don't make someone walk with that. We, we will come and get you if that's the case. But upper body injuries, harden up, get to the next checkpoint, okay? We're not coming to get you. Because some people just go on, oh, I, had this, I had this lady a couple of years ago, oh, I'm having an asthma attack, I'm, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and I put an oxygen monitor on her and she was perfectly okay, there was nothing wrong with her, and she said, oh, I feel better, I'm just going to keep moving. And it was like an hour's worth of resources, and they were just all over her trying to help her out, but it was just a bit of harden up and keep moving, like it's a trail event of 96 kilometres, move on, okay? Sorry, I just, I see people that will say it a bit, and you need, you need to toughen up a bit from here, okay? Guys, this app, if you do not have this in your mobile phone, get your mobile phone out now and take a photo of this app. It is a free app for your mobile phone, and when you put it onto your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone, okay, it GPS tracks your actual location and brings up your latitude and longitude for wherever you are on the planet. You can call the ambulance and let them know exactly where you are from that app, and you can even zoom in and out, there's my address, but anyway. Um, zoom in and out, I just took some screenshots of it. It is a brilliant first aid app across the board. There's some really good information areas on the bottom right hand side of that app for SES and other people, but that's a good app. I'll leave it up for a second, take a photo. If you want the slides, just give us a little bit later on, I'm over here, okay? Emergency plus, with the symbol plus, not the word, okay? Um, some really good things I've seen in the time that I've been doing the challenge and one thing that has adapted and worked very, very well, cheap set of walkie-talkies because when you get close enough to your checkpoint you can walkie-talkie or for $39 with a, with a five kilometre range to what radios um, your support crew and let them know where you are. It's a really, really good tip and in some areas that won't work, in some areas phones won't work but really, really good to have communications on the track to, to the outside world, okay? Um, you won't get texts all the time, but it's great when you're just cruising along, whether you're walking or jogging or whatever you do, every now and then your phone will go off and it'll be a message from someone, how are you going, I'm thinking of you at this point in time, or oh yeah, yeah, Joe Bloggs is in bed sleeping and thinking of us at this point in time, great. It's good to get those every now and then for a bit of a G up. So keep your phone on, yes, one person keep a phone on them, it's highly recommended, alright? Oh. Here we go, we go downhill in a hurry from here. So every year I get up and talk, people go, really, should I tape my feet? Should I use the skin slick? Should I be using gingy socks? Oh, I don't know, I've been training and I've done a, fifth, you know, a, a 50K walk or I've been out there for like eight hours. These things do not happen until you know, 15 hours on. So they're the sort of things that you're not really prepared for, you're not sure, and if you're getting to this stage here, and continuing without, you know, addressing it earlier, then there is something seriously wrong with your mind. Okay? But there probably is if you're here anyway, I reckon. So, so feet that you do not want, and I've got way worse pictures than this, guys, that I can't even show you, like where the ends of the toes are coming off and stuff like that. So, you know, I just, I just go, mate, can I take a photo of that? Because no one's going to believe me on that one, dude. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, some people's minds are very strong, okay? So, guys, a couple of tips to get over this and not let it happen to you, because you will not finish with feet like this. 
is make sure that you have the right pair of shoes that fit you effectively. Trail shoes rock and roll on these big up and down inclines and declines. So make sure you have a pair of trail shoes. If you don't have a decent pair of shoes now, I would not, I, I wouldn't leave it another week to go out and get them. You need to wear these shoes in. If you buy them a week before, they're too new, they're going to smash your feet to bits. I like to go half the size too big with my shoes because your feet will swell over the space of 20 hours and you'll be banging into the end of your shoes, ripping your toenails apart. Okay, so make sure you go a little bit bigger on your shoes so you can put socks in and so forth and so on. Second pair of socks definitely are recommended. In gingy socks are good, but there's lots of other styles of socks out there. Guys, and when, what I'm saying and what everyone is saying tonight, please don't just go out and buy all this stuff. What you need to do is you need to get a little bit of it and try it and see how it goes and goes, that's junk, that's crap, don't need that, oh that's great, I'm going to use that. Try all some stuff. Between now, you've got four and a half weeks, a couple of good sessions at least left to go out and try some of these things. So give, give it a try and wear stuff in, okay? Um, what else have I got? Tape your feet. I love, guys, I like to just say tape your feet. Try all taping your feet for 10 bucks. It could be the difference between having feet like that and not having feet like that. If you don't like the tape on your feet and you've gone out and given it a go, nothing lost, you know, but basically looking at how to tape your feet. And, and I'm, not, I'm not taking over the podiatrist job because they do a really good job of taping feet. I'm not taping your feet for support. I'm putting a second layer of skin that will not tear apart on the outside of your feet. Okay, and then socks over the top of that. So tape your feet up. Um, I think it's definitely recommended. Taping your feet the night before. Okay, the, the tape will go so much better moulded to your feet the night before. Have a shower, you know, the next day trim any lumps off and bumps and do that in a training session, see how it goes. You may or may not like it. And I did have a guy ring me one year and go, oh mate, I have allergies to the glue in the tape. Well, don't use the tape, dude. Good, I'm glad you did do it on the day. You're an idiot if you did. Okay, so yeah, cool. Use rock tape. Rock tape's low allergenic, good work as well. It's about 30 bucks a roll. So 10 bucks, give it a try. Okay, a very, very good tip. Um, you know, at the halfway point, by the time you get to Namabar Hall, if you're doing the full event, you have crossed seven creek crossings within 10 kilometres of the halfway point. It makes sense to me to have a second pair of shoes and socks at the halfway point and make sure that you have them there just in case you want to. Some crazy person two weeks ago, I was doing a 30k run out in um, Narang and I got to a creek crossing after the rains and what have you and I stopped, I took my shoes and socks off and this girl called Britt videoed me and it sort of went a bit viral because Scotty Wimpy's taking his shoes off before he goes through creek crossings. I hate getting my feet wet because they tear up. So I will stop and then have a guess what, straight past them, boom, 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 yep, yeah, see you later. Uh, and up the hill, and they're squish, 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 like you know. So try and keep your feet as dry as you can, guys. Make an effort to keep them dry, it's going to help out after 20 hours. Okay, um, you know, I've got their tape, you know, tape hot spots. I oh, have the Vaseline in there, guys, but that, this skin slick stuff, I tried it, I got given a thing of it last week and did some sessions with it. It is absolute gold. Now, what I what I will say with this, the skin slick over here is if you put it on directly onto your feet, it is instead of tape. So if you're putting it directly on your feet, you cannot tape over the top of that because the tape won't stick to it. It's, it's, like, like, it's, it's like a second skin, but it's like a slippery version of second skin which will dry and, and give you fantastic relief, okay? It could be, it's definitely gonna be great, guys. Like you see, I've, I've worn a pack and some stuff up here. I just wanna show you what I normally wear in the event because someone came up to me last week and said, mate, you didn't show anyone what to wear, so I'm gonna show you what to wear in the event if you don't have any idea. Like I've got arm warmers and bits and pieces under here that I just wanna show you. But, you know, you don't realise that this little bit here is gonna rub a hole in your neck. So you get, you know, you get your skin slick out, spray a tiny bit there, and it goes away straight away. So having that stuff as running repairs on the go, you know, your nipples. Like I've had blood hosing out of people's nipples in this event, and people show me, I'm going, I don't want to look at that. Like, what? Just fix it and go away. Like, band-aids, tape over your nipples. It's not attractive. Depends on what you're into, but it's definitely not that attractive to me, so tape them up and take your nipples somewhere else, you know, because the rubbing, the rubbing is a nightmare, so just, and these things happen, guys, believe it or not, you know, bits and pieces wobble and jiggle, so, but for hours, okay? 
So here's a guy that took my advice and taped his toes and his heels. Didn't tape that main part, that is skin. And he wanted me to fix that and that was with about 45 kilometres to go. I think that was Sid Duncan Park. Probably 35k to go, going to get down Hellfire. I taped it up afterwards and got him to the finish line, but he said this mate was giving him so much grief it was ready to just all tear off, okay? Um, blister care is not conventional. I've tried blister packs, I've tried band-aids, I've tried everything for blisters. The only things that are gonna work on blisters, guys, is taping them up um, and basically prior to, and if you get a hot spot, you'll know what I mean, you've got certain rubbing, it'll start to heat up a bit in your shoe. So take your shoes and socks off and tape there and then, and then put your shoes and socks back on. So that's the second skin. Running repairs is what we're talking about here. Not running, walking repairs. I kept saying running because I'm a running freak, but anyway. Just, so just basically get that on the go. If you have a blister that's smaller, um, that, you know, that's only quite small, like five, 10 cent piece sort of size, then don't worry about it, just tape over it, keep moving. Anything bigger than that, just get rid of it, just pop it. We never recommend to pop blisters normally in first aid, but if you need to keep moving, it's gonna get in the way. Lance it, pop it, give it a bit of a swab with an alcohol, or probably not alcohol, swab that swab with alcohol, like betadine or something like that, tape over it, keep moving, and it will still hurt a little bit, but you'll get to the finish line with it, okay? So essentially that's what I'm saying with blisters, okay? Um, there's going to be a podiatrist at the finish line over here, alright, so basically um, go and sort see those guys at the finish line because they are lifesavers and really a lot of the podiatry is really going to be done just prior to the event to look after you with looking after your feet and after the event in that, in that finishing stage, go and see those guys. They're, they're, these guys are very skilled at what they do. They've been involved with the Kakata Challenge for years, so it's different to conventional podiatry. It's actually very unique to this event. So um, the guys over here are definitely worth talking to and just getting a card and going and seeing those guys. All right. um, here's a blister pack. Someone asked me, oh, do you sell blister packs? Mate, blister packs are crap. Okay, blister packs will come off. Like in this event, I'm not recommending them at all. I've tried every style. If you come up with a blister pack that works, come and see me and tell me what it is, because I haven't found one yet. Please take note of the end of that guy's toes, because they all came off. Oh, you can see how wet and just junky they are. Oh, I decided not to tape, mate. I didn't know. I didn't have any information about tape, so I just decided not to do it. And that was before halfway. All right, so I'm looking after his feet, trying to help him out to get him to the finish line. He didn't make it to the finish line, that guy. So. Um, ITB syndrome, um, from coming down the hills, if you've been doing some of the training on some of the bigger inclines and declines, then you will, if you have ITB syndrome, you'll know about it. If you don't have it, then you don't want to know about it, okay? Iliotibial band runs down the outside of your leg. Every time you come down a hill, it jams tight and releases again. And over thousands and thousands of repetitive times of doing that, it starts to become inflamed, and it feels like it will pull your patella off. Your kneecap will feel like it's shredded. A lot of people don't finish because of this, so I've come up with lots of different techniques over the years, and the only one that I've trialled that actually works is what you see here. Basically taping directly above the knee and just locking it up. Now there is ITB straps that you can buy for about $35 each, which do move around a little bit, and I've trialled them. I've trialled um, all different sorts of tape, I've trialled um, um, actually knee supports for up and down, above and below knee, and I've just found that the only thing after probably about three years of just give, almost giving up on it, the only thing that works for me over years of the event is pretty much just this version of ITB strapping. So, Blakey, where are you, mate? You're coming up, dude. Rock and roll, let's go. Give him a clap, boys. Soon to be at a park cleaning up near you. All right. Come on, mate. I picked Blake because he's got great legs and he's wearing shorts so I can show you. Um, guys, I've got a video on this as well which is on the Kokoda website. If you haven't seen it already, you probably need to have a look at it. Um, but you will notice Blake's got um, quite hairy legs, so for people that have hairy legs, I'm recommending this. Okay, so I'm going to sort of hop off the microphone for a minute and get him out in the middle here, mate. So I've just, got, I've just got some compression bandage here. It's just a little bit of compression bandage and I've got some tape and I'll show you pretty much how I'm gonna do it exactly. You need to keep your legs straight. Can you roll just one of your side of your shorts up a little bit? Whoa, whoa. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna go two fingers directly above the kneecap. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that just compression bandage there like that. Just 
One really good version of that I've seen is a guy actually must have been a big wine drinker and he had a bottle of wine, not on that challenge, probably should have wished he had one there, but he had a cork bottle and he actually put the cork bottle directly over the ITB and then locked the cork bottle to the ITB. Now what this does guys, because the why behind this is probably important, it keeps continued pressure on that ITB so it doesn't release and lock every time. For some reason, it just seems to work really well. If you have other issues, so there's, there's medial, um, you've got pain on the inside of your knee, then you may need to go for some other version of strapping and seeing, a, like a, not a podiatrist, but probably more so a physio for that style of thing. Uh, people have asked after the last briefing night, people emailed me left, right and centre and said, oh mate, should I put it on before the event or if I don't have ITB syndrome, should I get it on anyway? No. No, you, this is only goes on when you start having problems. Okay, it only goes on when you start having problems. It will not fix it, but it will alleviate it enough to get you to the finish line. All right, so it just takes that little bit of a pain off, about 5%, 10% of the pain comes away, gets you to the finish line. The second thing I'm gonna highly recommend if you're getting to this point here is anti-inflammatories will help at this point here as well. If you've got this sort of grief going on and you're halfway or even before halfway, a couple of anti-inflammatories will help out a little bit as well. But don't overdo it on the anti-inflammatories because you'll end up with something called rhabdomyolysis, which is basically peeing blood because your muscles start to break down from having too many anti-inflammatories. And we've had that as well on the event. And you can die from that. So don't have too many anti-inflammatories. Just go the minimal on it, okay? Give them a clap, rock and roll, mate. Okay, um, a couple of other things guys, um, shaping, took a guy with a black's groin one day when I was out on the challenge, here it is here, okay, um, he didn't finish because of that one, and again, shaping can happen in all different sorts of spots, so I'm not going to recommend taping your groin up, um, I'm going to recommend wearing slits, like, um, like skins, to stop your groin from rubbing together, that's the most common spot with this. And me being tiny and skinny, I don't have the issue. But if you're a you know, normal sort of built person, then you, you, you know, your thighs will probably rub together and you'll have issues. The skin slick is gonna save your life on that one. For 20 bucks a can, guys, seriously, you are way better off trying that to see how it goes. And again, try it early, because there could be an allergy or there could be something there, unless you know it is or isn't gonna work. But we've had so much success with this stuff so far, it's just, you'd be ridiculous not to have one can for the team. Just get one can for the team. Just put five bucks in each or something like that, okay? Um, caused by rubbing, um, know your bits, know where it is, skin slick on that one. You can take like feet or other areas like over nipples and stuff like that as mentioned. Band-aids come off, so I'm not recommending band-aids. And um, it's, it's custom built for the event. The girl that actually um, actually sort of set most of the skin slick information up, Mel, she's been doing like things like the um, the North Face Challenge and things like that, just to see how it'll go, like, so 150, and, and 50k races and stuff, just to see how it'll go. And she swears by it. I tried it last weekend. It, it goes really good. So give it a go. You can't go too far wrong, OK? Um, a little bit about us, like I've got these videos and Google Plus guys, if you're on Google Plus I've got all my videos on Google Plus but also Facebook and also the Kokoda page as well. And we have the kit special tonight as mentioned, I've got tape, first aid kit and ITB um, to go around there for $20 on special and they normally sell out pretty much every night so check them out. 
a little bit about hydration. Like normally um, with previous sponsors like Hammer Nutrition, we still race on Hammer and we find it very, very good. They've got a custom built product. And my wife's Celiac, so it's the only product out there that actually does support, um, you know, like gluten free and also for all other different types of, um, you know, any kind of weird stomach conditions and stuff. But we just find it a really good natural product. Um, so we're using things like sports drinks, gels, um, and I think also keep in mind that years ago people were doing things like Ironmans and stuff and using things like fruit and nuts and or if you can go natural with some of this stuff, like give it a go. Um, one of the things I got um, put on to probably about five or six years ago from a couple of cyclists that did the Tour de France and what have you, being involved with Condev, um, is just straight baked potatoes. So if you just bake up a couple of potatoes, put a bit of salt on them, cut them into eighths and bake them, um, take you 20 minutes to bake them, um, just put you know a small amount of them in a Ziploc bag and just every hour or so just nibble on one and two things, the best carbohydrates you can get are out of potatoes. But number two, if you've been eating gels for the last four hours, your mouth is just gumped up and you just get that real glug gluggy, yucky taste. So because of the starch in the potatoes, it gives you a real fresh sort of feeling in your mouth. So it's actually a really good, cheap, inexpensive way to get good basic carbs into your system as well. So give the old baked potatoes a bit of a go. Um, rule of thumb, underdo your nutrition. Don't overdo it because all the blood is in your legs and if you're funneling carbohydrates and proteins and stuff into your system, then it's just gonna back up and you're gonna start vomiting and have diarrhea left, right, center like Adam. So basically, you don't want to overdo this. You want to keep it underdone if you can and just drip feed it in. The second biggest thing, guys, if you're using a gel, like a hammer gel or something like that, and you have the whole gel in one go, you've already made a massive mistake. You get four gels, you put it into a small bottle, you mix it up, and you just drip feed a quarter of a mouthful at a time into your system. It is a way better way to do it. Okay, and don't make a rookie error like me a few years ago where I put the gels in and didn't mix it with water because I couldn't get it out of the bloody water bottle, it was too thick. So mix it with water and then your whole pack, so I'll have a whole pack of gels on the front here all mixed in one bottle. This side here will be something like Perpetuum which has got your proteins in it and just straight water on the back. So I'll just, between the three I'll just keep rotating. Foods, when you're getting into checkpoints, if you're running the event and you need to go really, really light, so we go mostly liquid diets, but things like a little bit of fruit salad, um, some you know two minute noodles, just a, a couple of mouthfuls of two minute noodles to get on the go quickly. But if you're walking the event, mini quiches, two minute noodles, brownies, a hot cup of chocolate at three o'clock in the morning when it's seven degrees at Sea Duncan Park would be worth a thousand dollars. Coffee, you know, those sorts of things go really good. So there's some really good stuff on nutrition I'm about to put on. Um, check that stuff out as well. So one of our girls, Delina, is actually a nutritionist specialist for, um, for these events, so we'll put that up as well. Here's the, some of the gear, you know, you take a photo of this one, I reckon this is a cracker. So guys, I'm sweating like anything up here because I've got all my gear on. Um, people say, oh, is it cold? Mate, it's freezing. So through the day, it's not cold. But when you get into the night, we get down to like seven, eight degrees, and it does get quite cold if you're waiting for one of your team members for half an hour. So your, your core temperature drops fairly low, and we're dealing with hypothermia as well. So a couple of things, I'm just gonna show you what I've got on. First of all, I've got a really decent pack that I've trialed and I've worn a few times. I like to go some bottles in the front that squeeze down, not the full bottles, and I put a two litre hydration pack in the back as well. Okay, got pockets everywhere for gels and things like that and other bits of food to nibble on because you want something to actually eat as well while you're out there. So that hydration pack, I have a rain jacket on as well, which is very light that I can take off when I get hot and put it straight into the pack. Okay, into the pack, out of the pack. I can leave it through the day with my, my support crew. And guys, all this stuff generally will go into one clear tub a couple of days before with each checkpoint marked with a bag of the stuff that you want. So all, that, all your checkpoint guys have to do is just bring a clear tub in of yours and you know, you can just sit down and just go, oh, I can't even talk, just getting stuff out of it. Like, you know, you can work out yourself what you want out of there. So list your checkpoint foods and your things that you want at certain checkpoints. So checkpoint one, I want this, put it in a bag so you know you've got it yourself. They don't have to think for you. Okay, um, plan all your checkpoints up front with food time and roughly how long you're gonna be out there so you can work out how much food and gear you need to carry and what you're gonna need to restock with. So doing some training sessions to have an idea with that. 
you know, take your iPod for your music, for your down times, and when to take pain relief. Like, we had one team that went, oh, I never planned to take any pain relief whatsoever, and it did take them, it took them 39 hours to finish. Um, and if they had have had pain, oh, actually, I think he pulled out because he didn't have pain relief. So, that, and everyone was on the right page, except for him, he didn't, hadn't discussed it and just decided not to take it at the last minute. So, you know, have those conversations now. You know, as I say, well done for getting here. I'm not going to take too much more of your time, but just think about these guys. These guys did it with no nutrition. Their feet were coming apart. They were getting shot if they fell behind. You know, they've toughed it out, guys. And, and you know, the new generation coming through, these guys, and, and you know, the, I see, I'm so proud of those Kokoda kids for what they've done. Guys like James Morland, a few of the Indigenous guys have gone through the program, you know, and they're, 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 they're leaders in community now from 10 years ago. And it does so much for these young guys so, and girls. So it's just, I, I think you're on the right track by being here and obviously supporting, so. Um, that's pretty much it, guys, from me. Thanks very much. Come and see me. Have a chat if you like over here later on. And thanks for listening.